Now, this is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. Dozens of pieces of parchment were written in Greek, uh, with just the name of God appearing in Hebrew. What if you would find a treasure that's been hidden for almost 1,900 years? In the dry desert of Israel, that's exactly what just happened. These aren't just any scrolls. They're parts of ancient books that hold stories from a time long ago that reveal the scariest secrets about humanity we have never seen before. This is not a regular lost Bible chapter. This book that just has been found in Turkey reveals more than ever before. Secret Ancient Writings um, It's important also because this is the first time where, when such fragments are found in an excavation and brought straight here to our laboratory. Finding pieces of ancient biblical scrolls is very special because it helps us understand old writings and the people who valued them a long time ago, more than a thousand years ago. Teams of people who study old things, called archaeologists, were working hard to protect these old writings. They found these pieces of paper, which they think are almost 1,900 years old, hidden in caves in the desert. This finding is super important. People say it's the biggest in the last 60 years. Time in over 60 years, we have fragments that of a biblical book that were discovered in an archaeological excavation. They found about 80 pieces of these old papers, which are parts of really old books, specifically from the parts called Zechariah and Nahum. These parts belong to a collection of writings known as the Twelve Minor Prophets. And even though these pieces are small, they, they did give us some new information that we did not know before. What's really interesting is that these writings are in Greek, but the special name for God is in Hebrew. This mix of languages shows that these writings are genuine and really valuable for understanding history. The people who owned these writings a long time ago were probably Jewish fighters. They were led by a guy named Simon Bar Kokhba and were trying to fight against the people who ruled them, the Romans, but things didn't go well for them. This was around the years 132 to 136 AD. This project is the protection of the area because, again, it is almost impossible to beat the looters, to uh, uh, find the looters while they're working. And the, the, the solution was to get to the caves before the looters. These fighters hid in the caves with their most important things, including these writings. But the people who study old things found more than just writings. They also found old coins from the same time the bones of a child who lived 6,000 years ago, and a really old basket, like 10,500 years old. And when the results came back, we were shocked. It, it is 10,500 years old. Which is the oldest one we've found that's still in one piece. This place where they found all these things is called the Cave of Horror, and it's a pretty scary name. It got this name because back in the 1960s, they found the bones of 40 people there. These people probably ran away from the Romans and had a really sad ending. But even though it's a sad place, it also held on to these really important old things. These things help us feel connected to what happened a long time ago and to the people who lived through those tough times. The Cave of Horror is in a desert in Israel called the Judean Desert. And it has a really scary name, but it's actually a very important place for history. It's also called Nahal Hever, Cave 8, 8 Ehev. The cave is known because of the 40 skeletons found there. These skeletons are thought to be from people who were running away during a big fight called the Bar Kokhba Revolt, which happened around 132-136 CE. These people were looking for a safe place during a very scary and confusing time, but unfortunately, they didn't survive. Even though it's a place with a sad story, the cave is also where we found really amazing things from the past. The Dead Sea Scrolls and Beyond. So, it's easy to see how the cave has turned out to be an amazing place for finding old things from the past. One of the most exciting things found in the cave are pieces of very old writings called the Dead Sea Scrolls. What we found is new fragments of a scroll that we have known before that had been discovered in the 1950s and early 1960s. These include parts of a collection of writings known as the Book of the Twelve, and they were written in Greek a long time ago, like between 50 and 1 BCE. 
These pieces were found in 2021 and are super special because they are a bit different from other old writings we know, and they have the name of God, Yahweh, written in an old version of the Hebrew language, even though the rest is in Greek. Finding these pieces helps us understand how writings were shared and changed a long time ago, especially around the time of a big uprising called the Bar Kokhba Revolt. But that's not all that was found in the cave. There were also the very well-kept remains of a child who lived 6,000 years ago. It's kind of sad, but also really interesting, because it gives us a peek into how people back then buried their dead and what their lives were like during a time we call the Chalcolithic period. This child, along with the Dead Sea Scrolls that are 2,000 years old, makes the cave an incredibly important place because it shows us how different times in history came together in one place. And there's even more. The people who study old things also dug up a really old basket in the cave. It's so old, like 2,500 years, that it's from a time called the Neolithic period. This might be the oldest basket we've ever found. This is, uh, as far as we know, the most biggest intact basket, the oldest intact basket that we know of. And it's amazing because it shows how skilled people were at making things a very long time ago. It also gives us clues about how people lived before they started using pottery. The dry air in the cave has helped keep these super old and priceless things safe and each one tells its own story from a different part of human history. The story of this cave just keeps getting more interesting with the discovery of the Damascus document, which is part of the famous Dead Sea Scrolls. This document is a really important piece of writing from a place called Qumran. It helps us learn a lot about a group of Jewish people known as the Essens, who many think were the ones who wrote these scrolls. The Damascus document, along with other writings found there, were probably written a long time ago, like between 150 BCE and 70 CE. These writings are like a window into the past, showing us what people believed, the languages they spoke, and how their cultures mixed and lived together during that time. The scrolls are in different languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, which really shows how diverse and colorful the people and their communities were back then. Finding these writings is like opening a brand new chapter in our understanding of religious books and how they were shared and changed over hundreds of years. The differences between these scrolls and the traditional religious texts we knew before give experts new clues about how these sacred writings have grown and changed over time. Right now, the Israel Antiquities Authority is searching through hundreds of caves in the area, and everyone is super excited about what other historical secrets and stories might be hidden there, just waiting to be found. The Forbidden Bible Another amazing discovery was a 1,000-year-old Bible found in Turkey, and it's a really big deal because it connects us directly to the ancient traditions and beliefs of Christians. This old Bible was discovered in Tokat, a city in the middle of Turkey. It's written in Assyriac, an ancient language, which really shows how diverse and rich the early Christian communities were in their languages and cultures. Over time, the Bible has experienced quite a bit of wear and tear. Despite this, its cover, though damaged, is still managing to keep together 51 pages that are of great importance both historically and religiously. These pages are delicate but contain beautifully detailed images and designs made with gold leaf. These intricate details are a testament to the craftsmanship and deep respect of the time. You'll find that among the artwork, there are striking portrayals of Jesus Christ and other figures from the Bible. These images give us a special view into the religious symbols and art from that era. The discovery of this Bible was part of a larger effort to stop the illegal trading of precious historical items. This mission is crucial in our fight to protect the heritage that belongs to all of us, globally. In this particular instance, the police in Turkey, acting on a tip-off, managed to not only recover this Bible, but also a collection of other valuable items like jewelry and ancient coins. This highlights just how varied and rich the historical items that smugglers aim for can be. But the importance of this Bible isn't just about its history or the artistry it displays. Theologians and historians are excited because they believe it might offer new information about the early days of Christianity. The Bible is written in the Assyriac language, which links it to the Assyrian Christian community. 
This community is still around today, holding on to their language and cultural traditions. So, this Bible isn't just an old item, it's a connection to a living culture. It offers both believers and scholars a real, physical link back to the early followers of their faith. The book, estimated to be worth between $3 million and $50 million and originating from the late 9th or early 10th century, is part of the intriguing world of biblical artifacts. Each of these artifacts carries its own unique story and enormous value. They're important not just because of their religious meaning, but also because they mark key moments in the story of humanity and its cultures. The world of biblical artifacts is truly intriguing, especially when you look at ancient texts and manuscripts like the ones found in Ugarit. These texts, known as the Ugaritic texts, have been crucial in illuminating ancient civilizations' religious and cultural life. They provide insights into the religion of Canaan and show how closely it was connected to the early practices of the Israelites. Secret Messages on Clay the Ugaritic texts are an extensive collection of writings on clay tablets in what's now modern Syria. They date back to the 13th and 12th centuries BCE and include around 1,500 texts and fragments. These writings are not just religious texts. They also include literature like the epic Baal Cycle and even diplomatic and administrative records, painting a picture of a society that was complex and interconnected. The religious aspects of these texts are particularly intriguing. They give us detailed descriptions of the gods worshipped in Canaan, such as El, the supreme god, and Asherah, associated with motherhood and fertility. Then there's Astarte, known for her connections to warfare and fertility, and Anath, portrayed as a fierce warrior goddess. The stories and images of these deities provide a vivid glimpse into the rich tapestry of myths and beliefs in the ancient Near East. The story of Baal, a famous tale from long ago, tells us about the adventures of a god named Baal. He had to fight many other gods, like Yam, who was the god of the sea, and Mot, who was the god of death. These exciting tales are more than just stories. They help us understand what people believed in those times. They also show us what was important to them, and how they explained natural events, like the changing of the seasons. For example, when Baal went to the underworld, people thought it was like the dry season when there's no rain. Besides, the ancient writings from a place called Ugarit are really important. They help us understand a very old book, the Hebrew Bible. The languages used in Ugarit and in the Hebrew Bible are similar because they come from the same family of languages. This similarity helps us figure out the meanings of some difficult parts of the Bible. There are characters and stories in the Bible that we can find in the older Ugaritic stories too. For example, the Ugaritic god of death, Mot, is similar to how death is shown in the Bible. And the way Ugarit talks about royal ancestors is like how the Bible describes life after death. Priceless, holy books. In the world of old religious books and artifacts, there are some really valuable and important items. One of the most famous is the Gutenberg Bible. It's special because it was one of the first big books made with a new way of printing, and it changed how knowledge was shared. It's worth a lot of money, up to $35 million. But it's not the only valuable religious book. There's also the Bay Psalm book, the first book printed in what's now the United States. And the St. Cuthbert Gospel, a book from the 8th century that's really well preserved. These books are worth millions, too. Other special religious books include the Rothschild Prayer Book, a beautifully made book from the early 16th century, and the Gospel of Henry the Lion, a book from the 12th century with amazing artwork. These books sold for a lot of money because they're really special and rare. And there are more. Like the Wycliffite New Testament Manuscript, an old copy of the New Testament, and the complete Babylonian Talmud, an important Jewish book they're also very valuable and respected. The oldest Bibles are really interesting. They show us how the Bible was passed down over the years. Experts use different ways to figure out how old these old Bibles are. The oldest complete New Testament is in a book called the Codex Sinaiticus from around 350 CE, and the oldest complete Old Testament is in the Codex Sassoon from the 10th or 11th century CE. It's amazing that the words in these old Bibles haven't changed much over time. 
We also have some really old pieces of the New Testament, like a tiny piece from John's Gospel, known as P52, which is the earliest piece mentioning Jesus Christ. And from the Old Testament, we have the Hinnom Scrolls, found in a piece of jewelry near Jerusalem, with a special blessing written on them. These old texts are really important for understanding the history and meaning of the Bible. The Bible is not just one book. It's a collection of many books written over 1,400 years by around 40 different people. We have old copies of most of the books in the Old Testament, thanks to the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Cairo Geniza. These copies are from a long time ago, around the 2nd century BC and the 1st century AD. Along with these, we have over 5,000 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. All these old writings help us put together what the earliest versions of the Bible might have looked like. People have always taken great care to keep these texts safe and respect them because they are considered sacred. Sacred tales, different voices. When you look at these religious texts, you'll find that many stories and characters appear in more than one of them. For example, the Quran, which is a very important book for Muslims, talks about more than 50 people and events that are also in the Bible. But the way these stories are told can be quite different. Each book might focus on different parts of the story or teach different lessons. Scholars think that even though these texts have some things in common, they each have their own way of explaining stories and characters. Muslims, for instance, believe that the Quran is a message directly from God. They think it fixes any mistakes or misunderstandings that might be in earlier texts, like the Bible. There's a concept in Islam called Isra Liyat that talks about this. It means that early Muslim scholars did look at Jewish and Christian ideas when they were trying to understand the Quran, but they were very careful about it. They didn't just accept or reject these ideas without thinking them through. There's also a method where scholars use the Bible to help understand the Qur'an better. This method, called Tafsir al-Qur'an bil-Kitab, involves using Arabic versions of the Bible. It's a way of studying that many well-known Muslim scholars have used. In the study of religion, there are books like The Qur'an and the Bible, text and commentary by Gabriel Said Reynolds that explore how these sacred texts are connected. They show how the Quran includes and responds to the stories, images, and writing styles from Jewish and Christian traditions. It's a detailed study of how these texts are linked and how they've influenced each other over time. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the Masoretic Text, and the Septuagint are all really important for understanding the Bible and its history. Each one gives us a different view into how the Bible was first written and how people thought about it and kept it safe over the years. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found by a young shepherd in the middle of the 20th century in some caves near the Dead Sea. These old papers include parts of the Hebrew Bible, which is the Old Testament for Christians, and other writings from a Jewish group that lived around the time of the Second Temple, which was about 2300 thou to 1900 years ago. These scrolls are considered one of the most amazing discoveries in archaeology. Finding the Dead Sea Scrolls was like opening a time capsule, giving us a real look into the beliefs and culture of people from long ago. Among these ancient texts, the Isaiah Scroll stands out. It's a really long scroll, 24 feet to be exact, and it has the whole book of Isaiah on it. What's amazing is that it was written around 100 BCE, a whole hundred years before Jesus was born. This scroll is special because it has prophecies about a Messiah coming, and finding it has helped clear up doubts about when these prophecies were actually written. The people who wrote these scrolls are thought to be part of the Essene community. The Essenes were a group of Jews who lived in a place called Qumran. They were known for living simply and following Jewish laws very strictly. The scrolls show that the Essenes were waiting for a Messiah to come and fix a world they thought was full of problems and start a time where God's rules would be the most important. This idea that a Messiah was coming and the different ways people understood religion back then help us figure out how Christianity started. These scrolls are a big deal for scholars 
especially those who study the Bible and its history. They show that the Old Testament was already being used before 300 BCE. This is important because it confirms that the stories and teachings in the Bible were passed down very carefully over a long time. But the scrolls also have some differences from other versions of the Bible like the Masoretic text. This shows us that people in different places might have had their own versions of these stories. It's like having different editions of the same book, each with its own little twists. The Masoretic text, which was put together around 1000 CE by Jewish scholars, is another important piece of this puzzle. It's a very carefully written version of the Hebrew Bible. The scholars who wrote it added lots of notes about how to pronounce words and understand the grammar. This was their way of making sure that nothing got lost or changed as people copied the text over the years. When we compare the Masoretic text with the Dead Sea Scrolls, we see that they match up really well in many parts. This tells us that the people who copied the Bible over the centuries did an amazing job keeping it the same. Then there's the Septuagint, which is a Greek version of the Hebrew Bible. It was made around the 3rd century BCE. Most of the time, it's pretty similar to the Hebrew text, but sometimes there are differences in the words used or even in the meaning. The Dead Sea Scrolls have shown us that there was a version of the Hebrew text that matches the Septuagint. This means that the people who translated the Septuagint were working from a Hebrew text that was a bit different from the one that turned into the Masoretic text. Some scholars think that in some places, like in the timeline of events in the book of Genesis, the Septuagint might be closer to the original stories. Finding God Emmanuel Tov, a scholar, has a good point when he says we should use the Dead Sea Scrolls to help us understand the Bible better. The fact that the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Septuagint agree on some things suggests that the translators of the Septuagint had access to Hebrew texts similar to the ones found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. These scrolls are a thousand years older than the oldest complete Masoretic text we have. They give us a peek at what the Bible looked like during the time of the Second Temple. The Dead Sea Scrolls are super important for understanding the history of the Bible's text. They're the oldest copies of the Bible we have, going back from 250 BC to AD 68. They match really well with the Masoretic text that came later. This shows us that the words of the Bible have been passed down very faithfully for a long time. For example, there's a manuscript of Genesis from the Dead Sea Scrolls that's almost exactly the same as the Masoretic text, even though they were written hundreds of years apart. This tells us that the Bible we read today has been kept the same for about 2,000 years. The scrolls also help us understand the connection between the original Hebrew texts and the Septuagint. There are a couple of manuscripts of the Book of Jeremiah in the Dead Sea Scrolls that match the Septuagint more than they match the Masoretic text. This suggests that the Septuagint was a good translation of a different version of the Hebrew text that was used alongside the one that became the Masoretic text. The Dead Sea Scrolls give us insight into different versions of Hebrew texts. One such version is the Samaritan Pentateuch. This text is not the same as the Masoretic text, which is another version of the Hebrew Bible. The Samaritan Pentateuch has extra parts and some sections that are only found in its version. This shows us that there were many ways the Bible was written and passed down through time. It's important to look at all these different versions to really understand what the Bible says. The Septuagint is a very old translation of the Old Testament into Greek. It's so old that it's thought to be the oldest complete version of the Old Testament books we have. It doesn't compete with the Masoretic text, but adds to it. It shows that the Hebrew sources the Masoretic text came from were used a long time ago, as far back as the 3rd century BC. This means that the Masoretic text has a long history. Even though the people who copied these texts, called scribes, could make mistakes, they were very careful. Over many years, they made sure the words of the Bible were copied accurately. The fourth book of Maccabees is a story from the first century CE. It's about standing up for what you believe in, even when it's really hard. The book tells the story of a woman and her seven sons and a scribe named Eleazar. They all suffered, 
and died because they wouldn't give up their faith. The king of the Seleucid Empire, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, was the one who made them suffer. This story is also mentioned in another book called Two Maccabees, but Four Maccabees goes into more detail. It talks about why it makes sense to stay true to your faith, even when you're facing terrible things. The book says that if you're faithful, you'll be rewarded after this life. So, even when it's really tough, sticking to your religious rules is the smart thing to do. The style of writing in Forda Maccabees is very dramatic and emotional. It mixes deep thinking with powerful feelings. The book talks a lot about how being rational and controlling your emotions is important. It uses the stories of Eleazar, the seven brothers, and their mother to show this idea. The author describes in great detail how they were tortured. This is meant to make readers admire how dedicated they were to following Jewish law. Some people in the early Christian times thought that a famous Jewish historian named Josephus wrote this book. But most scholars today don't think that's true because the style and ideas in the book are different from his other works. They think the author was a Jewish person living outside of Israel, maybe in a place called Antioch. This book is a great example of how Jewish stories and Greek thinking were mixed together. It's believed that the book was meant to be read out loud, maybe as part of a speech to remember the people who died for their faith. Heroes of Faith the stories of the Maccabees are important not just for Jewish people, but also for Christians. For Christians, the story of the woman and her seven sons is a perfect example of what it means to be a martyr, someone who dies for their beliefs. These stories are celebrated in some churches on August 1st. Christians see the Maccabees as heroes who stood up for their faith just like Christian martyrs did later on. They are honored for their strong faith and bravery in facing such tough challenges. The Bible has long been known as a book that brings comfort and hope, particularly in difficult times. It's a book that many people turn to for guidance and strength. The role of Christianity, based on the teachings in this holy book, in shaping today's world, especially in areas like healthcare and helping those in need, is incredibly important and cannot be underestimated. Over the years, Christians following the teachings and example of Jesus Christ have been at the forefront of creating hospitals. This was a revolutionary step in the field of medicine. These hospitals were started with the goal of providing care to those who were poorest and most in need, showing the Christian commitment to help others. This act of kindness and care started a tradition that played a huge role in the beginning and growth of modern medicine and hospitals. Christian-founded hospitals were some of the first to offer organized and systematic medical care. But the impact of Christians in healthcare goes even further than hospitals. Many Christians, driven by their deep faith, have had key roles in advancing different areas of medicine like surgery, clinical medicine, medical ethics, and public health. Their work has made a significant difference in these fields. Christian influence is also seen in the world of science, which forms the basis of modern healthcare. The Christian principle of caring for the least of these, as Jesus taught, is a core part of their tradition. It guides their notable contributions to healthcare and science. This commitment is also seen in how some Christians view the healthcare system, pushing for systems that reflect Christian values like compassion, responsible care, and personal responsibility in healthcare. Moreover, Christians haven't just played a role in starting hospitals and shaping healthcare policies. They have also greatly contributed to the advancement of medical knowledge and techniques. Many individuals rooted in Christian faith have led major medical discoveries. Innovations such as the stethoscope, breakthroughs in surgery, and the foundation of important medical ethics were often the work of people whose Christian faith guided their pursuit of excellence in medicine and compassion for patients. The Christian way of serving and caring for the weak, as Jesus did, was a key force behind these advancements. This led to a more caring, ethical approach to treating patients and practicing medicine. In our world, there are many who haven't yet embraced the teachings of the Bible or recognized Jesus as their Savior. The path to understanding and belief is deeply personal and different for everyone. For many, the Bible is a way to understand the nature of God. It's believed that when someone truly seeks God, 
he reveals himself to them. This seeking isn't just a quick look, but a deep, sincere desire to understand and connect with the divine. Seeking God is a core part of Christianity, and it comes with many benefits. It's a journey that brings peace inside, a sense of purpose, and a feeling of deep love and joy. This affects our physical, emotional, and spiritual health. This journey of seeking leads to a change in a person, enabling them to have a positive effect on the world by becoming carriers of God's love, compassion, and fairness. Through seeking, people open themselves to God's wisdom, guidance, and power. This allows them to see the world the way God sees it and effectively meet the needs around them. It's more than just fulfilling religious duties. It's about truly aligning one's life with God's teachings and engaging in deep self-reflection for spiritual growth. So, what do you think? Are these old writings, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, telling us the whole story? Or is there more to learn from other ancient books, like the Bible we just found? And who knows what else might be hidden, just waiting to be dug up in Israel's deserts? Let us know. Subscribe and hit that like.